And then the other thing is, religion is very comfortable. You choose what you want to believe. You choose how much of it would affect your life. But you see, when the gospel comes to you and me, as it came to the Thessalonians, it was not, we'll keep a little bit of this to ourselves, we'll give this much more. No. They completely surrendered themselves to the truth and to the Holy Spirit. How do we know that? Because there was affliction. There was affliction. There was persecution. They didn't even regard the persecution, the affliction they were facing, because you know what? They were holding on to the Lord Jesus Christ with both arms. The weakness of the church is not that we don't know the truth. The weakness of the church is simply we only want so much of the truth. And we want to play in the courtyard of religion. But we do not want to come to the place where Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. Now, this is just the first nine verses in the book of Thessalonians. There is so much more. So much more. So you see, um, other people are telling Paul how effective his readers had become at spreading the gospel since they had heard it from him. They reported how the Thessalonians had turned from idols to serve the only divine and true God. You want to cross-reference, you look at Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 13. See, this was evidence of their faith and love. You know, it's amazing that these people would fully embrace the gospel. Now that's wonderful. It's good to really get hold of things. But not only that, they didn't only embrace the gospel, they put their lives under the gospel. And that's what Jesus meant. If you're going to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. One of the greatest problems in the church of Jesus Christ. We want heaven. We want all the blessings of heaven and eternal life. But you know, we come to the bargaining table and say, God, what will it cost me? And then we are only willing to pay the bare minimum to see if we can sneak into heaven. God will not allow us this. You see, not only was Paul conquered by the love of Jesus Christ, that he would go to the Gentile world, the people that he should have hated because of what his religion had taught him about the pagans and the lost and the, the, the secular people. And when he saw that Jews were turning to Christ, he went out to persecute them to purify Judaism. But then when he was conquered by God's love, God sent him to the heart of the Gentile world. What he would have absolutely nothing to do with. Not to sit with them, not to eat with them, not to walk in their path, not even to touch anything to do with the Gentile world. That's where God sent him. And now look what he's able to witness, how God has changed these Jews and Gentiles in Thessalonica, how God has changed them for himself. But you see, he also sees how this church, the people in Thessalonica, gave themselves completely over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not during the good times only, but during the worst times, facing persecution, and yet, they did not let go. So I'll tell you what I think happened. People heard.
heard that this group of people have found a new religion. And they also heard that they are being persecuted for this new level of faith. And you know people in uh, big cities, when you have everything at your fingertips, when you have a grand life because you can afford what you want in this life, and you have nothing to worry. But can I tell you, there was emptiness in Thessalonica. A great emptiness. There were myriads of gods. None seemed to satisfy. And when they heard about this little band of people being persecuted by this new faith, people began to perk up their ears. Some began to inquire and find out. And they saw a solid testimony for Jesus Christ at the foot of the cross. And you know, one thing I know about humanity, because I'm one of, uh, one among many, human beings are a curious bunch. There is no creation of God that has the curiosity as man has. That's why we have gone to the moon before the elephants and the lions. But you see, in that curiosity, they saw this light shining in a dark, prosperous city, this light was shining. And their faith went out like concentric rings. They were like that little pebble brought through in the middle of the lake. And those concentric rings went out further and further and further. Not only was Macedonia touched by the testimonies of this Thessalonians, but also another neighboring place called Achaia. But you know what? In the midst of persecution, the Thessalonian Christians will ask, now what? Is it just going to be persecution? And this is where Paul is going to bring to them about what Christ has promised us. You see, because of the pandemic, there has been so many people come out and tell us, oh, this is what God is doing, this is what's going to happen, this is how it's going to happen, and every day I read about a new person saying on the internet, oh, God spoke to me and told me this and this and this and this. Can I say to you, you can get lost in the maze trying to follow all these people. All of a sudden, God is talking to them. And they have a special message. As a pastor, I only have one desire. We go back to the Word of God and see what God has got. Because what God wants to say, He's already said it. To learn from His Word. And if God is going to prepare His church for His coming again, then let's look at those churches who knew how to stay prepared for his coming instead of listening to so many other voices and some of them contradict themselves in uh, just a second sentence they would give. So let me encourage you. First question, have you been conquered by the love of Christ? Second question, have you been changed by his love? And then the third question, can you let God's love in your heart that has changed you, commission you to be like the believers in Thessalonian church, that their faith went out and it's affected? So let me ask you the last question. How is your faith affecting those around you? That's where the rubber meets the road. And I know, because I've been there, it is so hard to bring the Word of God to family members. They know you so well. They will shut you down very quickly. But they cannot stop you praying. They cannot stop seeing your head sunk in His Word. Because I'll tell you, the effect of prayer and God's Word in you and the Holy Spirit working in you, they cannot deny the fact that God has done a work in you. And that alone should be the attraction. That's why Paul says, you even imitated us.
with his children falls now. Let it show in your life. Let it show in my life. Especially during this wonderful time that we are facing this pandemic. God will bring us through. But I pray we will not lose the shine of our light to a dying world. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Pray you will bless your word. You will bless our hearts with the truth. And Father, you will usher us on so that the world may know Christ in us, the hope, the hope for eternity. Thank you again for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray.